Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I am Vineet and first of all, a very happy new year to all the viewers of this video. I wish this new year brings all the success, happiness and lot of learning to you. Alright, so the usual year and release of Linux Mint is out. Mint 19.1 codename Tisa was released on 19th December. Mint is an Ubuntu based distro. The latest 19.1 version uses Ubuntu 18.4 as its package base. Mint has been around for over 12 years now and is one of the leader among the popular Linux distribution. For the past decade, Mint has been the go-to Linux distro for Windows user trying Linux for the first time. It has been and still is one of those distro that makes the transition to Linux extremely easy especially with its homemade cinnamon desktop. So let's check out what's changed with the new release. Or at first, the installation image size is the same, around 1.9 gigs. The installation process also remains the same, which already is one of the simplest OS installation out there. One thing that stands out in favor of Mint is with almost all major Linux distribution, including Ubuntu, giving up 32-bit support. Linux Mint is among the very few distro that still supports 32-bit system, which I think still has a wide user base. Alright, now once you boot to the desktop for the first time after the installation, you get this new welcome screen. This lets you change few settings and do sort of an initial customization to the desktop. So this is the latest Cinnamon 4.0 desktop and this latest desktop gives you two options for the bottom panel. You can either keep the new and modern looking panel which has this flat look or you can select the old and traditional panel which has this rounded tabs look that was in the previous releases and we are accustomed to. I think the new flat one looks really nice so I'm going to keep that. The welcome screen also gives you links to the features and release announcement pages. The new desktop also has increased and better contrast compared to the last release that makes the overall look of menus and text a lot sharper. The desktop setting menu has also been changed. You can change the vertical and horizontal grid size from these corner sliders. I believe one of the major reasons for Mint's high popularity has been its homemade cinnamon desktop. The desktop feels very similar to a Windows operating system with panel at the bottom and start menu similar to that of Windows XP. This familiarity makes the transition to Linux fairly easy. But to be honest, I am not a big fan of this design layout. To me, it feels very old school and very dated. I prefer GNOME, Dippin or Pantheon desktop over Cinnamon, but that's just my personal choice and I understand if you disagree with me. Barring the old Windows style design, Cinnamon has got everything going for it. And the area where Cinnamon really shines and beat the competition is the desktop performance. The Cinnamon desktop, especially 4.0, feels really snappy and fast and everything works without any lag. The Cinnamon desktop is also pretty low on hardware requirement. The system requirement for running the latest Mint is 1 GB RAM and 15 GB of hard disk, which is pretty low compared to other major competitors like Dippin, Manjaro or Ubuntu. Also on idle, the desktop uses just 850 MB of RAM, which in comparison just kills its competitors. So performance is a major win for Linux Mint. The desktop is also highly customizable with settings for panel customization, desktop themes, icons, window animation, etc. all available in the system settings. But there's one issue that I feel requires little attention is in categorizing settings in their proper category. The settings are sometimes really hard to look for. For example, usually you find the HIDPI setting in the display setting menu. But in Mint, it is under general category, which makes no sense. Also, there's a privacy setting and it has just one option in it to delete recently accessed files, which I feel can be clubbed in some other category like desktop or general. I believe these settings can be better categorized to make it easier to access. All right, moving on. One of the biggest requirements for having the best Linux experience is availability of hardware drivers. This is done by installing necessary drivers for your hardware. This process is pretty simple in Windows, but in Linux, it can be a bit of hassle to find appropriate drivers. 
But in Mint, you have this driver manager which automatically detect drivers and install it as per your hardware. It not only install open source hardware drivers, but can also install proprietary drivers, which is sometimes necessary to get the best results. One of the other key strength of Mint is its Nemo file manager. Nemo is a popular, fast and efficient file manager of Mint. And in the new release, Mint claims the file manager is now three times faster than previous releases. So now navigating and browsing file system is blazing fast. A new setting has also been added to also show the time when a file is created. The other big advantage of Mint is the availability of huge number of applications in its repo. Mint has over 60,000 packages covering wide range of apps which is more than sufficient for majority of Linux users. The list of pre-installed app is also pretty decent. Alright, so now my final thoughts. It's definitely a major release for Mint. The new release has many improvements in terms of desktop performance and looks. And if you are a Mint fan or new to Linux, Mint 19.1 is definitely the best option for you. Um, it's fast, it's user friendly, low on hardware resources and have great package selection to let you start your Linux journey. So I definitely recommend this distro. Alright, so that was all for today. I uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, do type that in, in the comment box. And a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Your support means a lot to me. And once again, I wish you a very happy new year. Alright, so thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.